A number of years ago, something incredible and an amazing coincidence happened, which put me on a mission to prevent heart attack. I became aware of the latest imaging technology to help define the health of individuals' arteries before they have a problem. Unfortunately, specialists and local doctors in my area didn't share my enthusiasm. I felt like I had a secret that I couldn't share. Eventually I decided I can't change the world from the top down, that I'd have to try and change from the bottom up. The Healthy Heart Network is an online, global community of like-minded people. We have an ever-expanding database of knowledge, a valuable, easily searchable and time-saving resource for members researching the latest information on heart attack causes and prevention. So you can start your journey to a healthier heart and reduce your risk of suffering a fatal heart attack. I believe we can prevent heart attack. We can put in place strategies to reduce risk. We can literally plan to change your future. I call it Healthy Heart Network. Welcome back for 60 Minutes. I'll let you in on a secret. I'm not getting any younger and neither are you. But we are getting bigger and bigger. And that's not good. The simple truth is we need to take better care of ourselves if we're to have a healthy life. So for a positive future, my doctors told me to look back, way back to my prehistoric ancestors' days. For six months now, I've been following his advice and dining like a caveman. Does it work? Well, you be the judge. At first, it seemed like a sensible idea to hand my body over to science. But right now, I'm not so sure. Maybe I don't need to do this after all, Jenny. <laughs> You've perhaps changed I've, your mind. Perhaps I'm not worried about the <laughs> After years of life on the road, not all was lived wisely. You hear the voice coming out of the machine asking when to breathe in and hold your breath. I will obey the machine. <laughs> I started to worry about heart disease. If I'm going to have a heart attack, what will I experience? It's scary. Patients describe terrible pressure in their chest. They haven't had anything like it before. They're often short of breath, um, sweaty, pale, unwell. Cardiologist Dr. Warwick Bishop's remarkable technology and calcium in the artery that runs down the front of the heart. means that for the first time we can analyse how good or bad our coronary arteries are without any invasive surgical operation. To be able to see the workings, the inside of one's own heart, is extraordinary. It's absolutely revolutionary, I believe. A few days later, the results are in, and the doc gives me the bad news that the high life I've been leading has caused calcification in one of my coronary arteries. And we can pick these changes up. I just need to get the camera and sound working. Here it is. Um, welcome to uh, my webinar. Thank you so much for signing up. I see we've already got some people listening in. Um, today we're talking about hearts and heart attack. I'm a cardiologist and really today is all about knowing your risk of heart attack and doing something about it. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to do a little bit of quick technical stuff. I'm going to bring up some prompts so that I can see what I've got to do um, and then we'll talk. Now, um, I'm really excited. Um, I've been working with a close friend and manager, John, who's helped me create the Healthy Heart Network. And what the Healthy Heart Network is all about is preventing people having heart attacks. I mean, my goal is really to help you not die unexpectedly, prematurely from something that we can prevent. Um, you know people that that's happened to. So anyway, I would really like you to stay to the end. And if you stay to the end, we will, that's John and I, we will we'll give you the choice of either an 
ebook of Know Your Real Risk of Heart Attack, and that sells at about $7 US on Amazon, or we'll give you the choice of an audio book. You can only have one or the other. We will put the um, email address in the chat at the end, but you have to hang around to the end to get that free gift. Um, there's pictures, there's cartoons, there's all sorts of stuff in there. It's a great book. And it is, in fact, uh, my second book. This is my first. So if you stay to the end, you'll get all that. But more than that, I will show you a path to your best heart health. Well, why? Why would this be any different? Well, what I'd like to say is I can tell you that what it is not. Probably like me, you've sat through these sales presentations on uh, the internet and they talk and they talk and they talk about the next great thing or whatever it might be and they do little drawings and cartoons that look really fantastic and 30 minutes later, you're really none the wiser until they say, hey, we've got a new vitamin which really hasn't been proven or a new supplement that we think should work and we're going to sell it to you. Lots of promise but little substance this is not like that. What I'm going to share with you is supported by medical literature. It's also supported by my experience as a cardiologist for over 20 years and supported by all the patients I've seen through my clinic, and that's thousands of people. This is not some dodgy sales pitch for a what's it or a thingamy. Honestly, I'm a senior cardiologist who's recognized in their field, has affiliation with major affiliations with major organizations, I can't afford to be dodgy or be underhanded. My guarantee to you is at the very least, you will obtain some free information, either from emailing us and requesting an ebook or an audio book, or you can go to my website and you can get free information there. Honestly, even if that was the least thing you did, it would help you get a better understanding about your risk of heart attack and it could help you or help you help someone else. So what's this all about? Well, what if I told you that there may be a gap between what's possible and what's being done? Well, would that surprise you? If I were a Formula One racing car mechanic and I said to you, you know, there are some things that we do at the cutting edge of the sport that your local mechanic doesn't do or may not be aware of, would you be surprised? I don't think so. What I'd put to you is that there are areas in medicine where there's a way to deal with it, like a Formula One team, and there are ways to deal with it like your local mechanic. That's what I want to shed some light on. If I told you that some doctors are just not familiar with the latest th technology that can help you, but I can give you information that may support them and support you get that knowledge, would that be worthwhile? Today, I'd like to share with you my tested system. It's something I've developed with my patients using the latest technology and evidence and lots of research and lots of thinking and lots of practice. And now I'm ready to share it with you. Well, honestly, who am I to offer this opinion, offer you this information? Well, I've got a few um, oh, a few plaques and certificates hanging on the wall, but yeah, honestly, that doesn't mean much. I can tell you I've been a preventive cardiologist for nearly two decades. I'm specially trained in imaging the heart. I'm particularly interested in cholesterol, and I've been looking after people trying to make a real and meaningful difference for over 20 years as a specialist in cardiology. What's really important is this, and I'm gonna read this so I don't make a mistake because you've got to take this away and I've got to be clear about this. So I'm gonna read it. As a doctor, I am unable to provide individual patient advice over the internet due to the complexity and importance of health-related issues. More than that, Australian guidelines, the Health Insurance Commission, prevent professional specialists giving advice without appropriate referral. So today, I'm all about informing and educating. 
I can't give you specifics because I'm not allowed to. I would love to, but I'm not allowed to. But I can inform and educate, and I'm deeply passionate about doing that. Well, is heart attack preventable? That's a reasonable question. I'm going to tell you I think it is because we still see people, family, friends, loved ones suffer unexpectedly. Heart attacks out of the blue. You know people that's happened to. We know that we see people who look after themselves and they have heart attacks. We see people who don't appear to look after themselves and to our surprise, they don't have heart attacks. How do we reconcile that? Is it possible to be more precise about figuring out who will and who won't? Could the latest technology give us some insight into that and allow us to be more precise and accurate in that assessment? Well, this whole webinar is about heart health. So if you're genuinely concerned about your own heart health, but feel you're not getting the information you need, <clears throat> then stay tuned because my objective is to teach you. And as I said before, there's opportunity for you to visit my website, which has free information. If you stay to the end of this webinar, a free book or a free audio book. So I do want you to be educated at the very least. That will help you to get the best health journey for yourself or perhaps for a loved one. Well, what is healthy being all about? Well, you know that um, exercise, keeping your weight under control, a good cholesterol, a good family history, at the right blood pressure are all, all important to stop a heart attack. We know they're important, but are they a guarantee that you won't have a heart attack? Think about it. You know of people who have had what appears to be all the cards stacked in their favour, and yet they've still had a problem that nobody saw coming. Can we do something differently about that? Well, I'd like to think that we can, and that's what I'm going to talk about, because I believe knowledge is power. And that's because we know that keeping fit is a great thing to do, but it is no guarantee. We know that you can do more and you can remove some of that risk of heart attack and be more precise about the situation if it were to occur. Knowledge is power because if we know what's ahead of us, we can make plans and put things in place to prevent a disaster from occurring. Well, doing the right thing. I'm sure you will agree that trying to remain fit and doing all the right things makes a lot of sense. And we know that even when people do that, they still occasionally die unexpectedly from heart attack. You will recall stories of people who have been fit and well. Um, even celebrities um, get their, their stories reach the news and the popular press because they've had a heart attack at the gym. It doesn't seem fair. But does that mean it could happen to you or the person next to you or the person you love or someone else at work? Well, of course, we, we don't know where lightning will strike, but can we do better? Well, what if I told you that there is a test that's used by presidents and NASA astronauts to try and start to be more predictive about the risk that someone may have of a heart attack? You remember President Clinton running around the White House one day, literally weeks later, having coronary artery bypass grafting. Nobody saw that coming. Ever since then, they've been doing a special test on every president to check what's going on with their heart so they can be more informed and prepared about what's going on. Well, can you get guaranteed good health? Well, I've seen men and women try and exercise their way to good health, and that's a great thing, don't get me wrong. And I love people exercising. But unfortunately, exercise is no guarantee that you may not run into a problem with your heart or even have a fatal event. Heart attacks are sudden, and we know these stories from the media and from our own circle of friends. My desire is to see individuals have better information and know if there is the possibility of that event occurring in them so that they're forewarned and can make plans to do something about it. 
Well, I see lots of medical constipation. I see patients with cholesterol levels that are high and these patients don't want to take medications. Or I see patients who are taking cholesterol tablets and they're getting side effects and nobody really knows what to do with them. And they're fighting with their GP and they're not sleeping at night because they're not taking their tablets or they should be taking their tablets, but they're having side effects and it doesn't work well. It's medical constipation and it needs something to help clarify what's going on. It's really a lack of inadequate information. Because once we bring information into that equation, we can start to be more precise about the individual, their need to take a cholesterol tablet, their side effects and how bad they are in contrast to weighing that up against the benefit that tablet will give that person. I realised through my own experience how inadequate information just leads to inadequate decision making and I really believe we can do better. So I'm going to tell you about the day my life changed. In 2005, I was on my way to work on a, I think it was a Sunday, could have been a Sunday. There was a fun run on. People were running from, uh, oh, what the, it's called the City to Casino Fun Run. If anyone knows Hobart, you run from um, the uh, city of Glenorchy to the casino in Sandy Bay. Now, I was driving to work, there was a commotion by the side of the road, an ambulance and people standing around. Because I'm a doctor, I thought, oh, I'll stop. I might be able to help. I pulled over and I lent a hand. It turned out a man in his early 50s who was participating in that race had dropped dead by the side of the road. We didn't know it, but he got resuscitated from his heart stopping which was caused by a heart attack. He got taken to the hospital straight away. He had a life-saving stent put in his artery and his life was saved. That man did so well that he actually ended up on the front page of the local newspaper literally a couple of days later. Now, I don't want to sound too proud, but because I was part of that resuscitation and that fantastic outcome, I actually had a copy of that paper and I went into work and I showed my staff to let them know. Well, it only took a moment for my secretary to point out, Warwick, you've seen that man 18 months ago. Well, you, I can't begin to tell you how the colour drained from my face and I felt an absolute chill. I looked at my notes and she was right. I had seen that man for non-specific pains in the chest. I'd done a treadmill test on him. I'd checked his blood pressure. I'd added some aspirin to his therapeutic regime. I'd done everything right and to the book based on what we had to do in 2003. And yet there I was a year and a half later at the roadside beside this man who had died, brought back to life, nearly lost forever. Something was wrong here. Something was clearly not right. So this really changed the way I viewed my practice. I was open to trying to understand if we could do things better. Wouldn't you be? This was a man who got up that morning expecting to run 10 kilometres. He'd been training for weeks or months to do so. He didn't get up that morning doing up his uh, shoelaces thinking, oh, I'm going to die today. Of course not. This man had exercised. He'd looked after his blood pressure. He was otherwise fit and well. He was only just 50 odd years of age and he dropped dead out of the blue. What I want to talk about is being better. What I want to talk about is that prevention is better than cure. There's always lots of questions. Anytime you try and improve your health, there's always roadblocks. Things like, well, I don't have the time. I don't, don't want to know. I feel fine. What if there's a problem? Uh, can I really prevent a heart attack? Uh, can I be more uh, precise about my own risk of heart attack, the confusing opinions about cholesterol, the confusing opinions about how to eat, oh, what do I do? Uh, what are the steps to a healthier lifestyle? Well, if you've faced all those questions, yet you understand that fun runners can drop dead, then that's what I want to demystify. That's what I want to do for you as 
part of what I've learned over my last decade imaging hearts. So what can be done differently? What could we do so that that fun runner episode doesn't happen again? And what I want to do is start off by talking about what we did for him, which was using standard risk calculators. Well, I've done a lot of things right and I've done a lot of things wrong. And after doing this for a number of years, I've realized a couple of things. The first thing is people who look fit and well can still have a heart attack. The next thing I realized is that our current risk calculators, the things that we use to figure out your risk of a heart attack when you go to the GP, are like rolling a die. And I'm not prepared to do that anymore. And the last thing I realized is there's lots of confusion about risk of heart attacks and taking statins and who should take statins and who shouldn't take statins and, and where the truth lies. So I know what the questions are and I discovered the hard way how to look at things differently. You don't have to discover the hard way. You don't have to drop dead unexpectedly by the side of the road. So I'm going to talk about three secrets here. The first secret is that technology has changed the way we use traditional risk assessment. I'm going to talk about how not all doctors are necessarily experienced with the technology that I think is really central to being more precise. And lastly, I'm going to talk about you requiring a good team to give you the best results. Well, technology has changed the way we uh, deal with heart disease and our current systems have really been based around measuring your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your age and figuring out on a chart uh, your cardiovascular risk. Well, um, that's all very good. Uh, the risk might be, you might be told, oh, your risk is 10% in 10 years. And your doctor will say, that's not so bad, just try and eat well and your cholesterol's up a bit, take that and exercise and look after yourself and we hope for the best. That's, uh, that's the traditional way and we've done that for years and that's okay because that's the best we've had and we've used the information we've had in the best possible way we can. But we need more detail. Think about my 50 odd year old running, a 50 year old male runner who dropped dead. He needed more detail. His risk assessment tool didn't show him at high risk at all, yet he had a heart attack. Why is that? Why can your risk appear to be low and yet you can still have a heart attack? How does this equate? Okay, this is really, really important. I'll take it slowly. So if you've got it already, forgive me if I'm dumbing it down, but if you haven't got it, I really want you to get this. So imagine you go to your doctor and your doctor says, looking at you with your cholesterol and your blood pressure and your um, age and your diabetic status and your smoking status, looking at you, your risk is 10% of a heart attack in 10 years. And we consider that low risk. Don't worry about it. Then what your doctor is actually saying to you is this. He's not actually saying your risk of a heart attack your risk of a heart attack is 10%, not you personally. What he's actually saying is, look, if we took a 100 people with the same characteristics that you have, the same age, the same blood pressure, the same cholesterol, the same smoking status, the same diabetic status, if we took all those, if we took 100 people with the same characteristics, our research and observation has shown us that 10 out of that 100 people would have a heart attack i.e. a 10% risk. The truth though is we don't know which 10 out of the 100 are going to have the heart attack. There's the roll of the dice. The difference is here. Current risk calculators look at the risk within a population, but you are an individual. The population may have a risk of 10% of an event over 10 years, but you as an individual will have one of two event rates, either a 0% event rate, nothing happens to you in 10 years, or a 100% event rate, something does happen to you. That's binary. You either have something happen or not. You cannot have a 10% heart attack. So 
understand there is a difference between a population-based risk assessment being applied to you versus your actual individual risk. This is really important. It's actually in the book as well. So try and get your head around that. The next secret I want to share with you is that not all doctors are familiar with the changes that are going on. Use the Formula One mechanic example. I bet you can think that there are situations that may occur where your family doctor or even your cardiologist are so busy being across all the stuff in their particular areas that they just don't have a chance to look at something over here that hasn't hit their radar. Um, that's not a hard thing to imagine and change takes time. So I'm going to just read you a little story. I saw a guy called Phil, 48 year old fireman. Um, he came to see me for risk of heart attack. We spoke about um, risk of heart attack and I tell you, he was a fit, strong looking man. In fact, if the fire department had a calendar, he would feature uh, on one of the uh, one of the photos with his shirt off, uh, holding a hose with rippled muscles. He was strong and fit. However, he had a terrible family history of heart problems and his mum had seen me as a patient and read my book. His mum had actually insisted he come and see me for an opinion. That was in spite of the fact that Phil had seen six months earlier another cardiologist in town to assess his risk of heart attack. Now that cardiologist did what I did back in 2003. That cardiologist hadn't moved on. That cardiologist put Phil through a treadmill test. I just told you he's fit as anything. Strong, exercised several times a week in the gym and ran. What do you think the treadmill test showed? Nothing. The cardiologist reassured Phil and told him there was nothing to do. When I saw Phil at his mum's insistence, I spoke with him and said, we can do some other stuff, Phil. We can actually take pictures of the arteries and see if there's rust in the pipes that may not be a problem today, but may be a problem tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, or in the next five years. Phil was happy to do that and he was pretty keen not to upset his mum. So he, he went with the plan. There was no trouble there. We actually did get images of his arteries and I have to say, I was surprised. It did turn up. Images, of changes in his arteries with buildup of cholesterol and plaque that was significant for a man under 50 years of age. And that plaque was so significant that left unattended, there's no question that Phil would have succumbed to the same fate as many in the rest of his family at a young age. We got Phil on the right treatment He's doing really well. We are keeping a really close eye on him. We have changed his future. And Phil now, Phil's mum now gets to plan on Phil providing more grandkids and hanging around for longer. Remember though, Phil's first cardiologist hadn't moved with the times and hadn't moved with the technology. The last secret is for the best results, you need the best team. There's no surprise with that. Um, even if you're, even if you think of the best individual athletes, they have nutritionists, they have power coaches, they have speed coaches, they have uh, psychological support, you know, all that stuff. You know that you can't Google your way to the best heart health. If you think that you are kidding yourself, and I know that because I run a Facebook group where people tell me everything they've learned from Google. Ha, ah, well, good on them. I don't mind people being informed. In fact, I love people being informed. I really, really want people to be informed, but really the crux to that is getting good information. And I know that Google is skewed so that there are very vocal people advocating particular lines or opinions, and they can dominate a landscape. My, my intent, my desire, my wish is to actually bring not only years of experience in this space, but cutting edge, um, cutting edge knowledge about the current research and what we can do, bringing that to a position where I can educate you properly.
you can do it yourself and I wish you good luck. I don't think you'll get there and you probably know that too. Remember your best team always starts with you because if you aren't in the game, no one else will be. If you're not informed, who will judge best for you, your best plan? So you need to be part of the process. Uh, no one will spoon feed you to your best outcome. But my aim is to make sure you are educated and can understand the journey ahead of you so you can be the best captain of your own team. Well, your team starts with you and then we add the Healthy Heart Network, advice from a cardiologist, me, uh, who's got 20 years of training in treating hearts, cholesterol, risk factors and heart attacks. Your team is also shared with like-minded individuals. So we're actually going to form a community of people who are on the same process, who want the same goal, who can support each other, share successes, share challenges, share tricks of the trade. Your team also will include a dietary support from Nutrition for Life, a group who are so focused on heart health, that they've got a whole dietary support system in place to do that. Talking about team, I'm going to tell you briefly about a patient who ended up coming and seeing me for the very reason that she couldn't find her own team. Mandy joined our Healthy Heart Network and this is why. She'd had a family history of high cholesterols and bad hearts. She didn't want to go on a cholesterol lowering tablet because she just didn't want to take a tablet unless she needed to. She wasn't strongly opposed to it. She just thought, well, if I don't need a tablet, why would I take one? Which is a reasonable position. She'd done some research and to her good fortune on Google, she found me. She found my books. She got my books, read my books and thought it all made sense. My book talks about getting a scan on the heart. Well, she went to a local doctor and said to her local doctor, can I please get a scan on my heart? The local doctor said, no, nah, don't think you need one. You're fine. Not, not put off. Mandy went, reread my book, went back to the doctor, gave the book to a doctor and said, I would really like to get one of these scans, please. The doctor obviously uh, acquiesced, sent her along to a cardiologist in the local area who said, oh, you're fine. You don't need one of those. Off you go completely disenchanted with the team around her, Mandy reached out to the Healthy Heart Network. We've supported her. She's had her assessment done. She is completely happy with where she is and she's on the right path with the best possible information. It's a good story. So I, I strongly believe prevention is better than cure. And the trouble is most of the time, we are complacent about what we do. Please don't be complacent. Please think about your own, think about your car. Would you leave it and leave it and leave it and not change the oil or check the oil and not check the air pressure in the tires and not send it for a service to check that the brakes are going to work? Of course not. What's the most important vehicle? What's the most important thing? What's the most important asset? you have. It's you. What kills 50% of the population? Coronary disease. What kills a lot of people prematurely, particularly men around retirement age, when they're just ready to have the break and the time they deserve enjoying the fruits of their hard labor? Coronary disease. So please, prevention is better than cure. Please try and be proactive in that space. Remember, if you hang to the end, you can at least get a free copy of my uh, book as an ebook or as an audio book. Just email us and tell us what you would like, ebook or audio book. And you're welcome to go to my website where there is free information. I've even got a TV show there to help educate. So I'm going to wrap it up a bit there. Um, would you agree? I'm going to read this last bit so that I say the right words. Would you agree it's been time well spent so far? Well, I hope I've opened your eyes. I can't cover everything, as you would imagine, of course, in uh, less than an hour webinar. 
Today, though, I'm going to offer you uh, the opportunity to get more information. Um, and in fact, um, I'm going to run through that right now. So what I'd like to do is ask you a question. And that question is, is it OK for me to tell you about the Healthy Heart Network and what we offer? So wherever you may be, um, I would love you to hit us on the chat and say, yes, happy for me to continue. If you're not happy, uh, I'll pack up and I'll go home because uh, it's dinner time for me. It's probably dinner time for you. If you would like me to continue, I certainly will um, and give you some information about the. Um, so, yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, there's enough people out there in the chat room who would like me to continue. So I will. Um, I'm going to turn off my uh, my camera so that my manager can turn on uh, the slideshow and I will run through that with you. I'm going to just uh, sign off with this fantastic heart. I'm going to show you my book again. Um, I'm going to show you a journal I'm going to be talking about. Uh, this is a book I wrote before. Uh, called Have You Planned Your Heart Attack? Bit of a scary title, which is why we changed the title. And I'm going to launch into um, our slideshow uh, right now. So as I try to get uh, wrestle the technology, let's see how we go. So this looks like where we started, but it shouldn't be. So here we are. Uh, this is what the Healthy Heart Network is all about. Oops, something just, uh, so I think that was John just touching something. This is what the Healthy Heart Network is all about. Um, what we are, so what I'm going to do is give you some information, just some background. It's really important you get this because this is what we're offering. It's real support. We're offering something for everyone's budget, but really it's, it's a, it's a system or a program for people who really want to make a difference about their own risk of heart attack. Perhaps even people who've had a heart attack and want to know if their loved ones, particularly their kids, may be involved or if they could have known better and what they should be doing now. So this is about better knowledge. We offer something for everyone's budget because that's really important. And of course, those different uh, levels offer different opportunities. And that makes sense. Um, so here we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I need to press this. So there are five easy steps to the program that we've put together. We've got discovery, assessment, a health plan, an action plan, and a journey. And uh, I'll just run you through that really quickly. In the discovery, of course, you start to understand your own risk and how do we get our heads around what our risk is rather than just rolling a die. Well, that makes perfect sense. But we also give you information about understanding your heart. And we cover all that really nicely in this journal. So you look at this as a blob. By the time you get through this, you can take it apart and put it back together. <laughs> well, maybe not, but you know what I mean. Um, I also go through why the current approach to trying to manage risk just isn't good enough and how we can do better. In the assessment part, we learn the benefits of a more holistic evaluation. And doesn't that make sense? When was the last time you really felt fully assessed and your all your uh, issues dealt with in one single management plan to give you the best outcome? We talk about the scanning of the heart and how it works. And we also talk about some tests that we want you to get done so that we know where you are and we can figure out, well, what might be important for you. Remember, I can't give you specific information, but what I can say is, hmm, when I've dealt with patients who've had a cholesterol like this or a blood pressure like that or findings like that on their scan, then this is what I would recommend. When we get to the health plan, we've got a complementary diet assessment, and this is really exciting. We try and work with the Nutrition for Life team are just fantastic. You can Google them at your own leisure. Um, we get them to help us put in place something just for you. 
We talk about the role of medication because that's really important. We talk about medication goals because why take medication if you don't have a goal for it? Uh, we talk about problems or issues with medications and a role for supplements. During the action plan, we try and really be more precise about what your goals are and where you want to go. We work further on that food plan and try and develop um, an exercise plan as well. Remember, we've got some uh, recipes that'll come your way, but really importantly, as we're progressing through these stages, and this is the really good thing, as we're progressing through these stages at your own pace, because you can access them as it suits you, we will be having fortnightly live discussion groups so that you can ask questions about your journey, your questions, your specifics. And you know what? As you ask questions, you will be educating others. And isn't that just great? Haven't you been in that situation before where you've been in a lecture and an auditorium where someone's presented and you've thought to yourself, oh, I'm a bit nervous to ask, but lo and behold, someone in the back corner puts up their hand and asks the very question you were too shy to ask. Isn't that great? So we have interactive group sessions and these, I think, these are key to the success that these, uh, this journey, these paths, this is the glue that holds it all together. Together with together with the group of people, the members of the Healthy Heart Network, network supporting each other. It's, it's an exciting, it's an exciting and a positive place to be. So during my journey, we follow up on the blood tests, we check how things are going, have there been changes, what else do we need to do? And we really try to put it all into perspective. Well, why join? The, heart, the Healthy Heart Network was specifically designed for men and women who want to be proactive. If you don't want to be proactive, it's not for you. It's structured to get you information that you need to make the best plans, understanding that that information may not be what you're easily getting from your other sources. We've broken it down into easy to handle modules that you get to do at your own pace, step by step with support, both from me and support from the people around you undertaking the same journey. As soon as you register with the Healthy Heart Network, you'll be taken inside a members area and you'll have access immediately to all the course materials. Well, starting with the Getting Started module, but there's lots of stuff in there and that's fully available to you for all the time that you're part of the membership. Well, what is the Healthy Heart Network? I'm gonna run through this, but you can see it on your screen. It's instant access to the premium VIP member area. The value for this has been estimated around $3,000. There's a five-step course with videos, worksheets, um, journals, etc. Again, fantastic. That's all part of that VIP um, member access area. You get a, access to a private Facebook group. And we're probably going to even improve on that and move that Facebook group to our own special platform. So it's completely private and out of completely out of uh, sight of that Zuckerberg character. So we've got an opportunity to even progress that. We've got a bonus kit and we've got healthy life bonuses as well. That's the nutrition for life, guys. There are supporting resources which promote physical and emotional and spiritual growth. And there's a and there's a personal, that's with me, twice monthly online interactive uh, webinar or um, speaking into a group a lot like this. And this is ongoing. We've estimated the value of this at over $10,000. And I'm going to share these prices with you, not because I want to beat you over the head, not because I want to um, force you into a sale, and not because I'm going to give you a set of steak knives at the end. That's not the point. The point is, We've tried really hard to try and find access for people at the lowest entry level, at an intermediate entry level and a higher entry level, because we want to help you. And because I'm professional, because I've got registration in this country, because 
If I do something wrong, the consequences are huge. We really want to make sure that that value is real and that you are being helped and guided through the process. So quickly again, access to the member area, the private Facebook group, lots of supporting resources and speaking into that group on a regular basis. So what's getting results about? You know that we can all talk, we have, I mean, we all do New Year's resolutions. We know that uh, results don't occur without commitment and without doing something. And you won't do well with this material if, if you don't want to be committed about your own heart health. That's just common sense. We really need people who want to be proactive. If you don't want to be proactive, that's fine. We're not for you. You can save your money. You can have your risk assessment done the traditional way. That's fine. And let's roll a dice. You'll probably be fine. If you do want to be proactive, next slide. If you do want to be proactive, then we can help. We can give you lots of information. We can help you drive the conversation to your best heart health. And although we're going to ask you to do some work, it's serious because it's you, it's your heart, and it's your future. We're not taking it lightly. We really don't expect you to take it lightly. We don't want to spoon feed you because we know that if you spoon feed people, they don't own it. If they don't own it, what do they value it at? Honestly, your greatest, re your greatest resource is you. But I can't change you. I can only support you if you want to be supported. This has worked for people who want to reduce the risk of a heart attack. People who have high cholesterol and are not sure about what to do with statins. People who have suffered side effects from statins. People who come from families with bad hearts. People who know someone who's just died unexpectedly and want to make sure it doesn't happen to them. People who want to know about cardiac imaging. People who believe prevention is better than cure and Ain't that worth stopping and thinking about? Prevention is better than cure. We could say life is better than death. Need I say more? This has also been valuable for doctors who want to work with their patients and also want to be in touch with someone who's leading or who's dealing with some of the latest technology and dealing with some of the leaders in cholesterol management around the world. So you have two choices. Your first is to Google your way to good health. Google luck, oh, good luck. I think, I, as I said, I get plenty of people who try real hard to do that and they share their information with me on Facebook. Honestly, I, I love their temerity. I love their passion. It's a pity it's a bit misdirected. And the trouble is, if we set off on the wrong path, if we go too far, we can be a long way from where we should be if we've not got the coordinates right. Your second choice is to invest in a program that guides you reliably with the latest technology, the latest research, with someone who's got 20 odd years experience in looking after hearts to give you the best up-to-date inf information so that you can be part of the process for your best health outcome. So if you're of that second group and you're genuinely interested in being part of our team, part of our membership, part of the Healthy Heart Network, we actually have some extra bonuses for you. Again, sounds like a sales pitch. I'm terribly uncomfortable with this, but I do. I do want to make sure, and this is what I say to my uh, manager, John, I do want to make sure that people get value for money and it's really worthwhile for them because if they're not, if you're not happy with what you're getting, I'm not happy. So bonus one, you get the heart attack prevention kit. Well, I would love to pick up a set of scales and show you what those scales look like, but they're pretty cool and they come with an app and that app will tell you if you um, what your uh, fat weight is, what your water weight is. Uh, or keep a, it's a clever app that allows you to track all sorts of parameters. You get a book. In fact, I think it might even be a hardcover copy of this. So, oh, that's the journal. You get a hardcover copy of Know Your Risk of Heart Attack. Um, you also get the journal and that gives you something to work with. So the value there, 
couple of hundred bucks. Next. Bonus two. Uh, you may not believe this, but if, if it is appropriate, for you to get the testing done that we talk about in the Healthy Heart Network. John, I might just touch the slides myself. That'll probably work best. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Bonus number two, you're probably not going to believe this, but the truth is if you need a scan done on your heart that we talk about in the Healthy Heart Network, then, then we will... <laughs> We will rebate you 150 Australian dollars to go towards the cost of that scan because we want you to be able to afford it. We want to give you something back so that you can get the best heart health. We're actually going to give you money back. That's about $125 US. And that is an absolute pleasure. The third bonus is a complimentary dietary assessment by either Danielle Toscan or one of her team at the Nutrition for Life guys. They are fantastic. And um, they will be part of the complimentary dietary assessment. And uh, that value, 50 odd bucks. Uh, but they're a great team and absolutely committed to um, lowering cardiovascular risk and the best diets to do that. The next bonus is a low carb, healthy fat living ebook. And there's plenty of recipes and meal plans in there. So what a useful thing to get. We've also got a bonus low carb, healthy fat online starter. So we're talking low carbs, healthy fat, and all the information you need to crack on with that. And that value is a couple of hundred dollars. So we'll just put that in there as well. Plus there's a sugar detox course. Well, fantastic. There's so much stuff for you to work through. So many resources that can really set you up to point you in the right direction for your best heart health outcome. So quick summary, instant access to the premium VIP member area, private Facebook group, lots of supporting data, twice monthly interactive calls into the group by yours truly, plus the bonuses, heart attack prevention kit, recommended scan re rebate, money back to you for doing what we think is a good thing. I oh, think that's great. Complimentary dietary assessment, low carb, healthy fat living eBooks, low carb, healthy living online starter program, online sugar detox course. You can look at it all there but you can see we are really putting value together for you guys because value is what we need to give you to make sure you get the value for your health. So you can see why it's a good deal, really. Because um, <laughs> the, great, the greatest cost in life is regret. <laughs> and don't we know that? What if you or a loved one were to have a heart attack that may have been preventable? What if, I, what if I'd known now if, sorry, what if I knew then, back in 2003, what I know now, do you think that that fun runner may not have dropped dead by the side of the road? Do you think I might have engaged him in a conversation about how we might look at his arteries in more detail and be more precise about his risk? And he might, he may never, ever have ever been in the situation where he nearly lost his life. Unbelievable. All the regret in the world won't wind the clock back. And you can you can bet on that. So if all this program did was confirm what you thought your risk of a heart attack was, and you were right, and you're doing everything right, would it be worth it? My experience is that makes people happy. What if all this program did was show you you had a much greater risk of a heart attack than you could have guessed? And then what to do about it? Well, would that be worth it? Well, my experience in that space with patients in that situation is yes, resoundingly. Well, if all this program did was explain your risk from high cholesterol, would that be worth it? My again, my experience, I see lots of patients with high cholesterol and we're able to give them clarity around what it all means. 
If all this program did was give you answers that, are, that you are not getting from your own doctors, would it be worth it? And that's what we want to make sure you're just getting the answers you need to give you peace of mind and give you the best outcome. So you can get started now for $47 a month or $179 per month. Just go to the Healthy Heart Network. The um, link is written there. Uh, there's the membership summarizing what those excellent um, components of the membership are. You can see the premium membership has everything that the basic membership has, plus the prevention kit with the Bluetooth scales. It has the chats with me. It has the nutritionist. It has the scan rebate. So there's a lot of extra value in there. We can only do this uh, for a brief period of time, but the first 10 people who join a premium level will get a free 30 minute one on one call with me. Uh, it'll probably have to be early in the day or late in the day because during the day I'm uh, wall to wall with patients, but a full 30 minutes on the phone with with a cardiologist. Now, I remember, I can't answer specifics for you. That's not allowed. But I am allowed to say, well, that's interesting. In my experience with patients that I have in that situation, I tend to ask these questions. And gee whiz, the people I've had conversations with, it's been a really valuable thing. So I'm not going to read through this again because it sounds so repetitive. But what I want you to get is that we've put this together to give you value. We don't expect you to be part of a, a membership where you're not feeling that you're getting the answers you need and you're not getting value for your money. I can't afford to do that as a professional. You can't afford to invest in something that's not going to give you dividends. So have a look at that again. All that stuff is listed on the website. It really is what we've put together. We're proud of and we believe it hits the mark. So, um, oh, that slide's come up again. You can start any time now. Basic membership, premium membership. We've got the web address listed down the bottom. Uh, guarantee. Look, you can quit this any time you like. Obviously, um, the first month um, you can quit before the next month goes on. You can quit at the 11th hour on the 29th day of the first month. We don't mind, but we know that that journey is longer. We know that journey will engage you. We know that we're offering something that can make a difference for your life. But there's, there's, uh, there's no obligation. We won't tie you down to anything. So the real question is, traditional risk assessment is like rolling a dice. And I believe your life is not worth the gamble. You, have to believe that's the case as well. And we provide answers and information around bringing some clarity to that situation. So I'm going to tell you the tale of two people. The first is a fellow called Dave, a bloke in his 50s. Uh, his mum had heart troubles at 60. He carries a bit more weight than he should. He was a great athlete in his younger day. He eats well. His wife makes sure of that. He keeps reasonably fit. He gets his blood pressure checked with his local doctor. He doesn't smoke. His cholesterol is pretty average. Well, what else can he do? He talks to his GP and his GP says, let's send you for a treadmill test just to be sure. Well, he passes with flying colors. Doesn't have a problem, actually. He's happy with this. Uh, his wife's happy with this. But a year later, just six weeks before Christmas, as he's leaving the gym, he has a heart attack out of the blue and drops dead. He wasn't lucky enough to be in a fun run surrounded by people who could resuscitate him. Everyone says what a great guy he was and how he lived life to the full. You know what these eulogies are like. They're, they're, they really don't cut to the chase, which is what a bloody waste. What a loss. People say nice things because it hurts too much to say the obvious. His wife misses him. He's the, his kids don't have a father. The world keeps turning and Dave's forgotten. Well, the other story I'll tell you about is about Jeff. 
And Jeff's a guy also in his 50s, about the same age, professional guy, looks after himself. Um, Jeff's the sort of guy who we, we all know someone a bit like Jeff. They just seem to have everything under control. In fact, they're in such good balance with work and family and everything else. You sort of almost want to, you almost sort of want to dislike them or be a bit envious, but they're actually nice people. So you've got to like them because they're actually good people. So you put that in your back pocket. Jeff, through a membership, learns that there are ways that one can look at the heart to be more precise about risk. And he spoke to his family doctor about that, found out more about it because he was informed, went on, got appropriate testing, found out the situation, got a plan in place and clearly defined his risk of heart attack and took appropriate steps and strategies to deal with it. No fuss, the right information, the right assessment, the right medications, the right strategy for prevention of heart attack. And he lived happily ever after. Well, let me show you what to do next. Visit that website, thehealthyheartnetwork.com. Uh, you go to click the join the network button. There's a little arrow there. It's easy to find. Uh, choose uh, Australian dollars. Click there. US dollars. Click there. It's pretty straightforward. Um, pick the membership that suits your needs. Um, everything's listed there. The Facebook group, the journals, uh, the coaching calls, etc., etc. Um, here we go. Fill out all the details. Very straightforward. I'm sure you've seen the same on multiple websites. And then instant access to this member area. There's a lot of information there, lots and lots. And it'll keep you going for ages and ages and keep you well informed about what to expect and your journey. So what I'd like to do is wrap it up there. I'm going to um, throw the uh, chat open for people to ask some questions um, and see where we go. I, I see some people have already been asking some stuff. So I'll start off with uh, Lee, who has uh, sleep apnea but can't use a CPAP machine. I've tried and it's not working for me. How much damage could I be doing to my heart with all the EPIS? Um, uh, are the EPIS, do you mean apneic episodes, Lee? I guess you do. Um, so sleep apnea, certainly a concern for cardiovascular health. It is a good thing to try and deal with as best as possible. People get sleep apnea for different reasons. Sometimes the diaphragm doesn't move up and down as well as uh, it should while you're asleep for various neurological reasons. Uh, sometimes people who are carrying extra weight um, have their uh, larynx occlude or their upper airway occlude. Um, it is important for things like blood pressure and atrial fibrillation. Interestingly, there's not a lot of data that supports that, atri that sleep apnea has a huge incremental increase on cardiovascular disease. That's heart attacks. Having said that, we don't want people to have sleep apnea because it carries a greater risk of uh, atrial fibrillation, high blood pressure, and that could knock on to cardiac failure. But when it comes strictly down to coronary artery disease, it's not as bad as we would think. But whatever you can do to improve your sleep apnea and get better breath overnight and better sleep overnight, you should try and do. Thanks for asking a question, Lee. So we've got a few other people out there, Pauline, Julie, Cheryl, Anyone want to tell me where they're listening to this and watching this from? So anyone from um, outside of Australia? Anyone from inside Australia? Could someone let me know if we've got anyone from... Yeah, no worries, Lee. Have we got anyone, um, anyone from Victoria? from New South Wales, from Queensland, from Tasmania, 
from Northern Territory, from Western Australia, from the ACT, from South Australia. Oh, Melbourne, Victoria, Sydney. Good on you guys. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, John has put up under my name that if you want a free ebook or audio book, email members at drwarwickbishop.online and let us know which one you would like. You can have one or the other. The um, uh, ebook is retailing with Amazon for about $7 and the audio book for about $10 or $15. So whichever suits you. Uh, please take advantage of that offer. We would love to get that information out there. Oh, someone from South Australia and someone from Tassie. Good on you, Judy. Um, have we got any other questions? Uh, did Could anyone say they, uh, would anyone let me know if they enjoyed that webinar? Please. Anyone? <laughs> I'd love some feedback. Oh, I'm from Victoria. So I'm from South Australia. Is there a difference in the contrast used for a chest CT and a coronary CT? A uh, good question, Lee, but I asked a question first. Betty, was that yes, you liked it? Or it was good. Thank you, Pauline. John, it was great. Thank you, John. Much appreciated. I'm going to have a quick drink of water. To answer your question, Lee, uh, intravenous contrast used for uh, a chest CT and a coronary CT is exactly the same. In fact, the same contrast is used right through X-ray. We use a little bit of a difference depending on renal function sometimes. Um, oh, so um, love the webinar also. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> Good on you. Uh, we basically, X-ray contrast is X-ray contrast across the board. There's two different types. Uh, there is a, um, there is a, a type that we use for people with some renal impairment. So um, there you go. We've run about an hour, team. So um, are there any specific questions about the network before I wrap up? Because I'd love to answer. Oh, any other comments or feedback about the webinar? Did you think it, it might suit you or someone you know? For your bonus book, we've got the we've got the email address online for you guys. It's members at Dr. Warwick Bishop on word dot online. And then just simply let us know what you would like. Thank you for those people from Tasmania, from South Australia, from Sydney, from um, Victoria, uh, Melbourne, Sydney. Fantastic. All right, guys, do we have, can we hear it again as you dropped out a few times? Ah, oh, Pauline, well, that's, uh, I can only apologise for that, Pauline. I'm pretty sure that John, my manager, will be all over that and he'll be putting it up probably on my Facebook page. Um, but maybe, John, you could answer that and let Pauline know where this would be available again. Are there any other questions? Because I'm sort of going, going, gone. Fantastic to have so many people uh, join me. I really appreciate you making the time to listen. I really hope you get that I'm uh, deeply passionate about um, heart health and helping people get the best information possible. Um, been great sharing with you. Um, I do wish you the best of health. And uh, please, if you've got any questions, let us know. I really hope uh, that you or someone you love may end up joining us at the Healthy Heart Network. So take care and bye for now. Goodbye. Well, you can be the picture of health, but you could be going down the wrong path to a heart attack. So here to help is cardiologist and author, uh, Dr. Bishop. He joins me now from Australia. Thanks for making the track, right? Thank you. Or the trek all the way here. Um, <laughs> Thanks for having congrats me. Congrats on the book. But we, I feel like you wrote this so important for folks to hear because you kind of hear people, oh my gosh, they're like the picture of health. All of a sudden they have a heart attack, right? And this happens too often. Absolutely. So what do you want people to know? Well, in fact, that picture of health story is what started me on the journey mm -hmm. to explore this. 
um, in 2005, I literally stopped on the way to work at a roadside uh, cutout arrest. A fun runner had dropped dead during a fun run, and I just thought I could help, so yeah, I did. Yeah. It turned out after, and we saved this man's life actually. Yeah. It turned out, uh, and I found out several days later when his story made the front page of the paper. When I showed my staff at work, they quickly pointed out I'd seen the very same man 18 months earlier no. and had reassured him. And that, Casey, was incredibly confronting. I, yeah. I realised I'd missed an opportunity, and that opportunity nearly cost a life. And what that made me understand was the way we'd been evaluating things in the past was just not accurate mm -hmm. enough. Well, we're talking about your heart health today. Know your real risk of heart attack is on sale right now at bookstores, and it tells the single biggest killer, biggest killer lurking and what to do about it. And right now, Dr. Warwick Bishop is here, the author, to tell us more. This is such a fascinating topic, and it's something that everybody grapples with. You know, why am I taking stuff? Whether There's just so many um, issues that people are dealing with. I want to know why you you wrote the book. Look, I wrote the book because of something that happened to me in 2005. Mm -hmm. I was driving to work um, on a weekend. There was a fun run in progress. And as I was driving to work, I noticed a commotion. There was an ambulance and a group of people. And being a doctor, I thought, I wonder if I can help. So I pulled over, stopped. A 52-year-old man had dropped dead during the fun run from a heart attack. And I helped in his resuscitation. He lived. He made it to the hospital. In fact, his result was so good, he made the front page of the paper, like, paper a couple of days later. And so what happened in your head at that very well, moment? Well, I, I didn't even recognise the man. I was very, very proud. I took in the paper to my office and said, I was involved in this. this is a great outcome. And one of my secretaries said, but Warwick, you saw that same man 18 months ago. And I was absolutely horrified. I went and looked at the notes. I'd done a treadmill test oh, on him. No. I'd evaluated his risks. Everything in terms of appropriate practice at that time, I did right. But this man still had a heart attack during a fun run and, and died. And I, it really opened my mind to what can we do better to really know the health of someone's arteries. Obviously, stress tests don't tell us the whole story and obviously our old-fashioned traditional risk assessments don't tell us the whole story either, Jan. It might allow us to be more precise and literally over uh, a course of a couple of years after that technologies have moved on and you don't have to look beyond your phone to realise how quickly technologies move. Yeah. So really I in fact wrote a book to try and discuss where technology currently is and where current practice currently is because the technology's moved so quickly most doctors aren't aware of what's available. Now some people do know about this current technology and I think before we went to air I was telling you that US presidents and astronauts currently, yeah. are, currently are using this technology but I think there's a real space for individuals who want to be proactive about their own health to know the questions to ask of their doctors to see if, if that technology is for them. And we say that a lot here on The Morning Blend about taking some personal responsibility knowing getting a little bit of research yeah, yeah. on your own like your, yeah, your yeah. book what are some of the things that we can kind of do now to prepare us so look it's really important not to forget what we call our traditional risk factors and that's uh, blood pressure smoking diabetes and we could all name those eating well exercise etc but what i've written about is is whether imaging the heart and actually taking a picture of the arteries to see what the health of the artery, arteries is like, see if that's relevant for an individual. And that's an important conversation. Okay. And in fact, I've covered all the pros and cons in my book so that if, for example, uh, an individual's doctor wasn't quite up to speed with this technology, then at least the patient can bring uh, a balanced perspective and have that conversation. And we kind of also mentioned before we started about somebody looking physically oh, yeah. just fine. But again, this goes back to that, knowing what's really going on on the inside. You mentioned blood pressure. Uh, what about like statins, the, you know, things that we should probably know a little bit more about? Sure. So look, the, the fun runner who I just told yeah. you about, he put on his sand shoes that morning thinking he was going to run 10 kilometers and drop dead. He didn't plan to have a heart yeah. attack. And he was fit. He trained up for this. 
And so being well on the outside isn't a guarantee, and people have to understand that. We, we have so many examples. President Clinton was running uh, only days before yeah. he ended up having his bypass. And so you can look well on the outside, but the arteries may tell a different story. The thrust of the book is to save lives by, pre by preventing heart attacks. Absolutely, and that's what all of us should be doing right now, getting the book, knowing what to ask, knowing what's available to us, and knowing what we can do uh, to, again, forewarn uh, you know, what is going on. I'm going to tell them how to get a hold of this book, start on that journey. Doctor, thank you so much, and thank you for uh, expanding your knowledge to all of us. Thanks, Tina. Thanks that's for having me. That's wonderful. Everyone at home, to learn more about Dr. Bishop or his book, Know Your Real Risk of Heart Attack, please visit Dr. Warwick Bishop. I believe we can prevent heart attack. With the right knowledge and information, we can be informed, forewarned and prepared. We can put in place strategies to reduce risk. We can literally plan to change your future. It all started when my life changed on a day a life was nearly lost. In 2005, on a cool autumn Sunday morning, I was driving to work during the time a fun run was in progress. I noticed there was a commotion by the side of the road, an ambulance and people gathering, and I thought I might just stop and see if I could help. It turned out that a 52-year-old man during the run had collapsed dead by the side of the road. A GP and a nurse who happened to be in the event had stopped to help and the ambulance was there attending the scene. I joined in and was involved in the resuscitation of that man. Can you imagine a crowd of healthy runners a man who had got up that morning excited to be part of an event he'd trained for, and now that man by the side of the road. His heart had stopped, and now he was fighting for his life. He did okay. Two days later, in fact, he made the front page of the local paper, and I was so proud of myself that I took the paper into my office, only to have it pointed out to me by one of my staff that I'd seen the very same man approximately 18 months earlier in 2003 and told him he was fine. I had put him through a treadmill test, I had assessed his blood pressure, I had put him on a bit of aspirin, but nonetheless, here we are in 2005 and this man had fallen during a fun run. Can you imagine how I felt? I had reassured him only to be standing over his dead body at the roadside months later. I can't begin to tell you the feeling that left me with. What had I done wrong? What could I have done differently? What can be done differently? We all hear the statistics. We know that cardiovascular disease accounts for 50% of all deaths in the Western world. It kills over 350,000 people per annum in the United States. And that means that an American is dying every 40 seconds. In fact, since I've started talking, Approximately three people have passed away from coronary disease. But it's not the statistics that move us. It's the human cost. You will know someone. Stories of young lives lost. Loved ones, husbands, wives, brothers and sisters. Could it be you? Who would be affected if it were you? What if it was someone you loved? It was this that was my impetus to change. More than ever, I became focused on prevention of the suffering caused by heart disease. I studied management of cholesterol and I also became the first cardiologist in the state where I live to start using the latest imaging technology to help define the health of the arteries of an individual. I wanted to make a difference by providing the best possible care to my patients. My aim to reduce their risk of heart attack as much as possible. In fact, I became so excited about this possibility, I started to speak with my colleagues about it. I spoke at meetings in my town to the specialists like me, thinking they would be excited to embrace this new approach as, as I was. They weren't. Uh, professional conservatism, healthy scepticism, and perhaps just a dash of cynicism meant I hit a brick wall. I spoke with the local doctors, the primary caregivers, to educate them about this great opportunity to be ahead of the game of heart disease, another brick wall. Though this time because of a reluctance to utilise an approach that is not yet mainstream. 
Unable to convince my colleagues and unable to engage the local doctors, I was frustrated. I felt like I had a secret that could save the world, but nobody wanted to listen. I knew from my own experiences with my own patients that the way I was implementing treatments was making a difference. So how to get that information out there? Eventually I decided if I can't change the world from the top down, then I'd try to change things from the bottom up by educating and informing the very people who would be most interested in preventing a heart attack. And that's you. So I wrote a book. Well, initially it didn't sell particularly well, so I thought, well, what's the point of that? Unless I got the message out, then the message wouldn't be heard. And if it wasn't going to be heard, it wasn't going to make a difference and it wasn't going to save any lives. Then I realised I had to undertake my own journey to eventually bring my book to number one bestseller. I started to embrace social media and to create awareness. I needed to offer people a way to get more. Than, and that led me to create a network, a distillation of my research and my training and my experience. I truly believe we now have technology to save lives, to find people who really are at high risk of a heart attack before they have an event and put in place strategies to change their futures. I remain deeply passionate about stopping people dying while they still have plenty of life to live. You have to remember, life is not a dress rehearsal.